Welcome back everybody, this is Tassie with Tassie Eats and today I'm doing a ramen review. I've actually never had this type of ramen before. It is made by Sapporo Ichiban and it is known as their chow mein ramen. I have to say, looking at it, it doesn't really look like, it kind of looks like chow mein. Um, you know, I've never actually had it. I I made three packs, so you know, if I don't like it, I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to do a close up for you guys so you can see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. And again, I've never had this before. I have had ramen from um, Ichiban. And it's super hot. bad um, it reminds me of a ramen I've had before so these this ramen it's very thin the noodles are very thin and uh, I may have explained it before in another video but in case you didn't catch it ramen is different from uh, you know like I think it's like ramyam and ramen so some people think that ramyam is like Korean because that's how the, typically they pronounce ramen when they're speaking Korean, but actually it is the thickness of the noodles. So when you mention ramen, you know, it's the thinner type of noodles. Ramyam is the thicker noodles, like typically found in Korean type noodles. However, it's not, you know, if you say ramyam, it doesn't mean you're, you're eating just Korean noodles. Uh, so. For as dark as it is, it's not like super salty. When you cook it, they tell you it's one cup of water to one pack of ramen. Exactly. And you have to cook it until the water evaporates. So I was kind of afraid that it was overcooking my noodles because my noodles looked ready. But I had to wait until the water evaporated. And honestly, there was like a little, little bit of water left in my pot, but I poured it out. I was too afraid of overcooking my ramen. And basically, it, it was fine. Um, the seasoning made it very dark. I was really nervous because it looked salty. And it's actually not bad. It's very subtle. Um, I would not say this tastes like American Chinese chow mein. No, it doesn't taste like it. It's a ramen version of chow mein. And when I say that, sometimes ramen, it's like the knockoff of the real thing. Kind of like if you've had real ramen in a Japanese restaurant, it doesn't taste anything like the ramen bags. <laughs> and honestly, those who are used to ramen made at home in the packs, they may not appreciate real ramen at the Japanese restaurant. Granted, I've never had it in Japan. I've only had it at the restaurant in the Twin Cities. But I understand the differences that if this is instant at home it's instant you know whereas there are really good flavors in instant ramen at home i love eating ramen like everybody thinks it's weird that you know like i eat ramen the way a college kid is forced to eat ramen <laughs> and so it's just for me i love to eat ramen like if i could i eat it for every meal but the sodium is really bad for my body so it's just you know i love ramen now at the restaurant, it's very different. It's kind of like if you eat a pho ramen, you know how the pho ramen, it's kind of like, eh, it's cheap, quick pho, right? But it's not pho. But if you go to a restaurant, you have pho, it's like, that's real pho. So it's kind of like that. If that made sense. Alright. I have dry Thai pepper. Um, where'd my ghost pepper go? <laughs> Normally I keep it there. So, um, I'm not 
eating it with ghost pepper. I eat, I love to add spice and pepper to all of my foods, but there is such a thing as only a certain spice goes well with certain foods, okay? So it's like this, I can't cut up habaneros and put it in here. I could, but the taste is very, very different. Habaneros have a taste that goes great with like Mexican food and pizza. Whereas the Thai pepper, it's very different. It's much more subtle and it goes well with a lot of Asian dishes. That's why at a lot of Asian restaurants, they're gonna have Thai pepper. And it could be dried, it could be raw, it could be fresh, but um, uh, you know, I could use ghost pepper, but ghost pepper again will give it a different taste. And my ghost pepper flakes, they are much thicker. Whereas this crushed Thai pepper here, it's really fine. I mean, even um, raw Thai peppers would taste good with this too. And on the pack, it actually even says, add meat and vegetables to make it tastier. <laughs> so, <laughs> I did debate about it, but I wanted to try it alone, just the ramen pack, the way it is. This tastes like a ramen I've had before, but it had broth in there. And I'm trying to figure out which one it is. But it's ramen I had when I was younger, when I was a kid. It tastes good. <clears throat> it's, um, I'm going to say this. I prefer dry noodles. What do I mean? Have you ever had lo mein at a buffet, at a Chinese buffet in America? If you've ever had lo mein at a Chinese buffet in America, typically they are very wet, oily. Um, they're all oily, but, <laughs> but they're very wet. Like they move around easily. Kind of like there's a sauce on there. All right. I prefer lo mein that is dry like this and the noodles are thin like this, not thick ram uh, lo mein noodles. So I prefer them to be on more on the drier side without a lot of sauce. So that's probably why I prefer this or I like it because uh, whenever I eat ramen, I typically don't eat the broth. I kind of just pour, <laughs> I season it and everything in the pot as if I'm eating it with the broth and then I basically scoop out all the noodles and I eat just the noodles the way it is um and I do that because I'm not a huge fan of just sipping broth with my noodles it's because to me it's not like pho you know like where I'm enjoying it with the broth I prefer my noodles to be more on the drier side if it's ramen excuse me there <clears throat> you know? One thing I've noticed that a lot of people, and I'm not going to say it's Asians because I know it's not only Asians. I have seen other people who are not Asian. When they eat their noodles, any type of noodle, they tend to slurp, okay? I don't have a problem with it if somebody does it, but I know, honestly, I think it's in America. They, ha they look down on people slurping, but in Asian culture, it is a sign of respect that they really enjoy it. And they probably grew up being taught that way because their elders also did it. And you tend to take on the habits of your, whoever you're eating around with, right? Or you're around. Um, you know, people who, you know, I've dated, they're not even Asian and they slurp on their noodles too. So, <laughs> uh, I have to say, I personally don't slurp only because I don't know how. <laughs> I don't have the, the strength in my lungs, I guess, to like draw it in. So when I eat it, I have to like, 
I kind of like feed it in my mouth. I don't have the strength to do it. But if I could or if I did, I would definitely slurp myself. <laughs> that was me slurping. <laughs> Trying to slurp. I can't slurp noodles. <laughs> so I always bring the noodles into my mouth because I can't. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Let's try it again. I probably look like an idiot. <laughs> I kid you not. One time, I went to a Chinese buffet with my coworkers. And this was around the time I had started, but it had been at least a year. So, you know, we're kind of comfortable with each other. And we go to the restaurant. And um, there was another male coworker. He was Asian, of Asian descent. I'm trying to remember if he was adopted. I think he was adopted, but he was born in the Philippines. And basically, um, so we go to this Asian buffet, and I'm born and raised in Wisconsin, La Crosse, Wisconsin, in the U.S. So we go to this Chinese buffet, and I, you know, you grab your own utensils at the buffet. And so I went to go grab my stuff and I don't have any chopsticks. It's just a fork and a spoon. And you know, my, I don't know, I didn't have a butter knife, but it was just a fork and a spoon. And my super white male coworker asks me, cause then uh, the other guy, who the Asian guy who, who was adopted, he had chopsticks. And he was like, Cassie, how come you don't use chopsticks? <laughs> I like could not believe he had asked me that and I was like because I was born in America because we didn't I didn't grow up eating chop eating with chopsticks I grew up eating with forks and spoons I learned to eat chopsticks from eating pho and I wasn't until I was like 13 that I started to eat pho for the first time and so it was um I besides ramen I was always raised to eat ramen with a fork you know I didn't eat with chopsticks and <laughs> And then, like, I felt stupid for saying that because my colleague also next to me who was Asian, he was born in the Philippines, he was eating with chopsticks, and, I mean, for him, he was adopted, so I didn't really know, like, I don't really know. <laughs> you know, it's just, I felt stupid for saying it, you know, but I still can't believe my other coworker even asked me that. <laughs> and, you know, my response was a bit, I probably should have thought about my response a lot more, but I didn't grow up eating with chopsticks. This isn't bad. It's not bad. But it's not lo chow mein. It's not chow mein. That's really hot. Ooh. I am blowing it long enough.
Okay. I made three packs, but I'm pretty full now. I can't eat anymore. <laughs> All right, I only have like a little bit left and I'm pretty full. Overall though, my review on this ramen, I really don't know if I would get it again. Um, it didn't feel like it was anything special. I felt like it was just a dry version of ramen. Not really that it's chow mein or even that there's anything really special about it. I mean, it tastes good, but this is definitely not on the list of something I would get again or that I would recommend to somebody. It's just mediocre to me. <sighs> and I am pretty full, but I will try one more bite and I'll be done. Yeah, I'd have to give it a thumbs down for this ramen. I was pretty disappointed. I guess knowing that it's Sapporo and, you know, anyone who's had Sapporo Ichiban ramens before, they are more on the lackluster side. There may be some ramens out there that I haven't had yet made by Sapporo that's actually really, really good. But typically, I don't get any ramen on purpose by Sapporo Ichiban. I find that a lot of their ramens, it's like they have chicken and beef and shrimp, you know, but or seafood. But I don't think that their ramens are very unique or that tasty in my opinion. But this was a brand I hadn't tried before or, or a, t a version of it, the chow mein. It was something I hadn't tried before and I really wanted to give the shot just in case it really was good. But I found that it was really lackluster. I mean, it's edible. You know, it's edible, but it's just okay. <laughs> so I would not buy this again, though, but that's my personal review on the chow mein ramen.